but also give us eternal life that begins today. All those things that we need. Uh, we also have great life going on in this church right now, and I'm sure there's at least a couple of announcements we'd like to share with people. Does anyone have anything they need to share or want to share for the good of the congregation today? So, I first of all want to say, yes, that we know that in the midst of our joy and celebration, that there are people that are suffering, that we have people that are within our midst who are having really life-threatening struggles and battles that they are doing. And we also know that our nation and our world is struggling. So, you will hear prayers today for the people of Baltimore. You will also have an opportunity today to participate in the life of God for all God's people through uh, helping with the relief campaign that's going on for Nate Paul. Many of you got a sheet like this. You don't need this sheet, it's just for information. But uh, we, uh, people were calling saying, what can we do about this? It's so far away, and the suffering is so great. So what we are doing is we are supporting one of the greatest charities, and I say that because the fact that the money goes directly and is actually affecting things on the ground. And that is the ELCA, that's our Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, disaster response. It has both a domestic wing and it has an international global wing. And that global group is doing massive work on the ground in Nepal. So in addition to our regular offerings supporting the ministry here, which as always part of that goes out into the world, uh, in addition to our regular tithes and offerings, you have an opportunity on the back uh, shelves here in the final windows to uh, put an extra contribution into the basket that will go directly to the uh, disaster response in Nepal. So uh, we invite everyone to be part of that. If you want to do something and you're thinking during the week, just call Jody and we can do, continue to add up those contributions that we want to send off to support people there. So extra offerings can go in that basket. You can do that as you leave. Uh, and I'll mention it again before we're done. Uh, we're also very much uh, thinking about how uh, our Sunday school has done some incredible work uh, this year in their own gathering of offerings. And we just wanted to celebrate the fact that Sunday school, just in the last quarter where they've been working, just a few months, they raised $219 each. That's a total of $400 plus $19 twice. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 38. Um, $219 each for Holes for Our Troops, that wonderful uh, charity that raises money for helping uh, injured vets to build homes for their families, and the ELTA Domestic Disaster Response, which is great. They also just voted to now support, between now and the end of Sunday school time, uh, the malaria campaign which is our global uh, outreach to try to stop malaria. And so that was an exciting vote as well. So we celebrate the fact that we are, are doing that in our world. We'll also talk a little bit about how we work together to help people in need and the place where that happens. We'll talk about that more in our offertory time as well. I think that we're going to do this thing. Are we good? Well, then we get to uh, absolutely have a joyous occasion of inviting forward our baptismal family for the baptism of Ember Rose Nostein. You can just all gather along here. Alright, so you can come around this way. We'll hold it there. We don't have to quite go through yet. And you guys can come, so we'll go. Aaron is. Aaron, sponsor, sponsor. It's an audience participant for any game that we play. Perfect! Everybody see each other? Everybody see the baby? See these wonderful people? Let's do this thing. Here we go. Because it all starts with God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the, whole, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the world, the life of the world. 
called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you, the parents of Ember, desire to have Ember baptized into Christ? If so, say, we do. You guys can say, we do. Okay, awesome. As you bring Ember to receive this gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities. We've talked about this. To live with her among God's faithful people. Bring her to the Word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Ember grow in the Christian faith and life? So we'll say we do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Ember in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in the communion with the church? If so, say we do. People of God, do you promise to support Ember and pray for her in her new life in Christ. And so say we do. We do. And now, I invite all who are able to rise as we declare our profession of faith together. I ask you, first of all, parents and sponsors, do you profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church? Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Say, I renounce it. <laughs> Do you renounce all the powers of this world and rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? All respond. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus. Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters. And by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took the light. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain ember with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and life, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. 
the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Ember, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked by the cross of Christ forever. Amen.
sing one together. The Feast Song of Easter. <laughs> So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. 
This is the passage of scripture that Enoch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. And the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Samaria. Here he ends the lesson. Let us read responsibly Psalm 22, verses 25 to 31. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord be praised. May their hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord. Who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust of the lady dead shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn. Say to them, the Lord has from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and His love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in Him and He in us. He has given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Here is the lesson. So today the readings are all about being connected and loving one another and bearing fruit. And as our children's choir comes forth to this day, I'm going, oh, we're just, this is so exciting because we're celebrating two kinds of fruit, right? We have the, the gift of these children and their wonderful voices and wonderful faces. And the words to our song are also the gift of one of them. So we're excited to hear it's all about that. It just 
just like to add to this is the final time we're doing a fire on this day this year, but they're going to come back strong in the fall. So I just want to thank the children for sharing their voices with us and with the Lord, and also to their parents and uh, families for bringing them so faithfully to our practice and also on uh, Sunday morning. So here's our ready Christian <coughs> song. I think you'll recognize it too, but just with Christian words. If you remain in me and I in you, you 
will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be so I am not amazing with technology, not helpless, but not amazing. But Joel, my youngest daughter, downloaded a new app for me on my phone. It's called 8Tracks. People use it to create playlists, strings of song recordings. If I enter a song or an artist that I like, eight tracks will come up with a playlist created by someone else that contains that song or a song by that artist. I had to make a long drive earlier this week, so when I got into the car, I pulled up eight tracks, entered one of my favorite singers, and started listening to one of the recommended playlists. Some of the songs I had heard before, some were new to me. But all in all, I really enjoyed it, and I thought, wow, this is pretty good. I like almost all of these songs. Somewhere out in the world is a person who likes the same music as me. And it was a really nice feeling. I felt strangely connected to humanity, like I belonged to a huge and cool group of people. But then I thought, okay, this is great, but I would never really get to know that person who made the playlist. Even if I could somehow connect with them online, I won't know if they're really who they, if they are who they say they are. And we will almost certainly never meet face to face. So it's nice to know that they're out there, but to be healthy and happy, I also need to connect with people closer to home. There's a lot of research going on now about the effects of loneliness on a person. The stress hormones released because of loneliness can reduce a person's ability to think clearly. It can also compromise the immune system and increase the risk of heart disease. This effect can be as great as the effects of abuse of obesity, substance abuse, violence, and poor environmental quality. Loneliness can increase the risk for early death by 45% and for dementia by 64%. God has created us so that relationships with others are vital for us. And part of the point of Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, all of which allow the giving of the Holy Spirit, is to make it possible for us to relate to one another in a new way. So one of the things our gospel this morning is about is being connected. The illustration of the vine and branches is part of Jesus' teaching to his disciples on the night before his crucifixion. He's passing on his wisdom, comforting his disciples, reassuring them, and preparing them for a rough road ahead, when he will be crucified and they will feel frightened and alone. And later still, when they will be persecuted and executed for their faith in him. He has already promised them that God will send the Holy Spirit, the Advocate. And here he illustrates what the Holy Spirit does. It connects God's people to God through Christ. Last week, Pastor Chris talked about the Good Shepherd who lays down his life to prevent his sheep being scattered. This week, Jesus' message is much the same. I want you to stay together, he tells his disciples, and us. And my Father is going to make this possible for you by giving you the Holy Spirit. The other thing our gospel is about this morning is mission. Jesus also says, remain in me the vine and you will bear much fruit. What does it mean for us to bear fruit? And how do we do it? Well, I think bearing fruit means a couple of things like displaying the fruit of the Spirit, those, were, those are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It also means doing things that like, like relieving suffering, 
setting things right, lifting people up, feeding hungry people, clothing naked people, giving houses to people who are homeless, making people happier, and connecting people to God and to each other. There are probably more ways that a person could bear fruit than there are varieties of fruit in the world. But how do we do it? Well, a branch just doesn't grit its metaphorical teeth and clench its metaphorical fists and say, okay, okay, make a grape, make a grape. And then pop out with one. And neither do we. Fruit is the natural result of the growth of a branch when it's connected to a healthy vine. Producing fruit is just what it does. Jesus says we are to remain in him as he will remain in us. The old-fashioned word for this is abide. And what does it mean to abide in Jesus? Well, for me, that's a little harder to talk about, but in one sense, it is first staying with the church, staying with each other. Second, it's focusing on God, listening to the whisperings of the Spirit, and then third, focusing on the task at hand. The less I think about myself, whether or not I can succeed or what's in it for me, the better. The better I am able to do the things that are worth doing. Fruit comes from the energy of God's spirit flowing through our natural, God-given abilities, interests, and personalities. Fruit is a wonderful product of both who we are and what God does working through us. Under normal circumstances, we wouldn't expect a grapevine to produce a blueberry or an apple tree to produce a peach. And the fruit that each of us produces by the Spirit will be as unique and natural and amazing as each of us is. But we need to recognize that this fruit is only possible because of God. God created us, Jesus reclaims us, the Spirit connects us. Our fruit, though uniquely ours, still only comes through the careful tender tending of God the Father, the gardener, and through the vine of Jesus and the flowing sap of the Holy Spirit. And I hate to say it, but I have to say it, because I know it's awfully tempting, but being a branch among other branches doesn't give us the right to either criticize how another branch is doing or try to figure out how to make another branch bear the fruit we want it to bear. Their fruit comes from their relationship to the vine and the gardener as much as our fruit comes from our relationship to the vine and the gardener. We do best to be healthy in ourselves, self-differentiated as it is sometimes called. Our connection to each other is through Jesus. We get our life through him and through others only in him. The blessing in this, then, is that we can rejoice in one another's fruit and in our own fruit. The wonder of an amazing musical performance, a perfect glass of wine or beer, a perfectly based baked pastry, or a beautiful garden, whoever made it, can be enjoyed equally, because everything comes to us in part by our own efforts and those of our brothers and sisters, but ultimately from God. And there is no place for cutthroat competition or ambitious pride. The joy of producing fruit together, enough to make a bottle of wine or feed a hungry world, more than we could ever do on our, by ourselves, is a very great joy indeed. When Jesus gives us the image of the vine and the branches, he is speaking to us of connection and mission. And in this regard, our first reading is a wonderful and wacky illustration. That story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch is perfect. Philip, who just a few days before was hiding in fear, is now out and about by the power of the Spirit, he can run up alongside a horse-drawn chariot on the road to Gaza and then disappear in an instant to reappear in his office. The Ethiopian eunuch is a strange and exotic figure, at once glorious and yet somehow sad. He would have been a black man and one with great power and prestige, a high official from a royal court, 
but he was also a eunuch, a man either by nature or human hand unable ever to be a father. And he was in Jerusalem worshiping God, but he would never have been allowed inside the interior parts of the temple. Eunuchs and perhaps Ethiopians were forbidden there. But as the Spirit gives Philip the courage, the power, and the knowledge to preach the gospel to this man, and the Spirit allows this proud yet excluded official to open his heart, God connects them as brothers through baptism as we are connected to baby Ember today. And the fruit that they, Philip and Munich, bore together is the Church of Christ in Ethiopia, which is a more ancient church than the Western church of which we are a part. If we abide in Jesus, remain with him and in him with each other, we will be healthy and happier branches and we will bear much fruit and God will be glorified. For plants and animals, for clean water and air, 
for favorable weather, and for the whole creation, that you guide us to serve as good stewards of the earth. Let us pray for judges, lawyers, and all court officials, for leaders of government, and for all who seek justice in this world, that all be treated with fairness and equity. For the people of Baltimore, that peace and justice and equality may be restored there. Let us pray for those who are poor, hungry, bereaved, distressed, and sick. This morning we lift up the names John, Margaret, Jerry, Donna, Carol, Judith, Robert, Reed, Eileen, Nereen, Michael, and Hilbert. For our friends we also pray, Richard, Timothy, Keegan, Aaron, Faye, Eva, Emily, Dr. Shefali, Kara, Shirley, Ginger, Ellen, Cynthia, Bernard, Myrtle, Jay, Heather, Stephen, Denise, and the families of Bobby Sloan and Warren Crimeville. Let us pray. Be with all those whom we love so much who are not here with us this morning, those who must work, those too sick to leave their homes this morning. Their names include Lois, Yvonne, Evelyn, Edna, Ruth, Lois, Leah, Joyce, Paul and Grace, Florence, Durrell, Alberta, and Salem. Let us pray. We pray also especially this morning for those who are walking in the MS walk, those amongst our congregation and those in our community. Lord, may our walking with be a sign of your grace and healing to drive out this disease, cure it, and heal all the earth so that this, may, this disease of MS may be wiped away. Lord, in your mercy, have mercy, O oh God. For anyone whom we know and love who is suffering, sick, or grieving at this time, we say their names and needs out loud or silently in our hearts. Let us pray, have mercy, O oh God. Holy God, we ask for your blessing upon these prayer shawls made by the hands of our congregation to be signs of your healing and love to wrap your spirit around them. We pray first for Jay, Galahi, that he endure the treatment he has as he has reached a difficult diagnosis of lymphoma cancer. And we pray for Myrtle Comfort, comfort after her operation to continue to heal and help him make her whole. Bless these prayer shawls in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we pray for those who yearn for meeting and community for others, all the lonely and lost, that your Holy Spirit lead them to mentors in the faith. For those visiting this congregation this day, we pray for them as well. And for those away with family and friends on vacation, let us pray, have mercy on God. Holy God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, you have granted new life, abundant renewal and salvation. Hear our prayers for the sake of the one who has set us free. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Amen. As you are able, rise and share that sign of peace with one another.